So I am joined today by Sarah Atherton, who's calling me live from London. Um, now, one of the things I really want to talk to you about today, Sarah, is transport. But before that, um, you have literally just returned, haven't you, from the Falklands Islands. I'd love to hear more about what you've been doing over there. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you for having me. Yes, I returned from the Falklands yesterday. There was four parliamentarians uh, cross party chosen to accompany uh, the Princess Royal down to the Falklands for a few days as part of the Falklands 40 uh, Memorial. And it was absolutely fantastic. I got the opportunity uh, to meet the legislative MLAs there to lay a wreath at the Liberation Monument with Princess Anne and my fellow parliamentarians. Uh, but I also made a special pilgrimage to Fitzroy and Bluff Cove, which people may know is where the Tristan and so uh, St. Galahad went down uh, with a loss of many Welsh Guards lives. So I took a rock with me made by a young constituent from Wrexham, Owain, and he'd drawn a, a picture on it and said, thank you. And I laid a rock and planted a Welsh flag at the memorial there. And uh, it was very moving and very special. Uh, I also went to Liberty Lodge, which is a charity that runs uh, accommodation there for veterans and their partners to go down uh, and visit the Falklands uh, following their involvement in the 1982 war against Argentina. Uh, and it was a very moving, uh, very moving trip. And it was a privilege to go and to represent uh, Wales in the UK. And of course, you've been a champion of the armed forces for a long time, um, both professionally and personally, haven't you? So it's um, you know, a very important thing for you, isn't it? And, and of course, Wrexham being historically a garrison town as well. Yes, I am. Um, I'm ex-army myself. My husband's ex-navy, so we're heavily involved in the military in Wrexham. Uh, between us, we represent and attend the uh, Welsh Fusilier Comrades, the Royal Naval Association, the Welsh Guards and the Royal Artillery Association. Uh, so we're very active in the veterans scene in Wrexham. And I was really pleased to highlight to the chief executive of the Myla uh, some funding uh, to employ a veterans liaison pathway officer, uh, a lady called Zoe Roberts, and she's now embedded in the mile and doing absolutely fantastic work identifying veterans as they go into hospital, following them through their pathway uh, in the miler, and then out the other side and linking them to veteran services. So there's a lot of good work going on in Wrexham at the moment uh, for veterans, and I'll continue to lead and lobby on that as much as I can. But you know, Wrexham has a fantastic military footprint and last uh, the last 12 months we've seen many parades and uh, memorials going on in Wrexham and I was really pleased to attend the uh, the second international tattoo. Uh, the guy organising that's got great grand designs on uh, improving even more that with a view to perhaps holding it one day at Hightown Barracks. I'm very involved with the um, TA or the reserve company that set up at the barracks. Um, and I also planted a tribute on behalf of Wrexham at the parliamentary uh, gardens here uh, on remembrance. It was actually Armistice Day uh, on behalf of Wrexham. Uh, I'm trying to see what else we've done. Um, on Remembrance Day, I layered a wreath at the Welsh Fusilier War Memorial. Uh, and prior to that, I went round Holt, Worsalt, I'm trying to remember them all now, Holt, Worsalt, Gresford, Rosset and Sly and laid wreaths there uh, in advance of their own ceremonies because it can only be one at a time. But I did get uh, Sergeant Venables to lay my wreath I'm, and I'm very invested in women in the armed forces, obviously because I was in the armed forces as a woman back in the 80s. I'm back in Parliament uh, and I'll sit on the Defence Select Committee and I'll continue the work I'm doing around um, improving the lived experiences of women in the military. So uh, I have a very heavy military uh, brief and I'm very pleased to carry that. And it was delightful once again to see so much engagement in Wrexham for Remembrance Day, both um, both to acknowledge um, the 11th hour and also on Remembrance Sunday. So wonderful to see what always is in Wrexham, an amazing turnout from the public, isn't it? It is. And, you know, we must remember Wrexham's very strong military footprint. Uh, and we've got a very large uh, veterans community. In fact, the census data uh, came out not so long ago. And for the first time ever, people were asked, are you a veteran? 
and that's given us real good insight into the veteran community uh, in the Wrexham County Borough Council area. We have thousands and thousands of veterans and that's really important because under the Armed Forces Covenant now, statutory agencies that provide housing, health and education, which is our council and our health board, now have a legal duty of regard to make sure the needs of veterans are met. So uh, going forward, that's what I'll be doing. I'll be lobbying the health board, lobbying the council, continuing to work constructively with them uh, to make sure the needs of our veterans in Wrexham are met. And I think it's really important that people are aware, of course, especially businesses. There are different ways businesses can be involved. Here at Canon FM, we have signed up to the Armed Forces Covenant, which is one small step a business can take, isn't it, to show their support for veterans as well? Oh, absolutely. And I think off the top of my head, there's, there's around 10,000 businesses UK wide, many in Wrexham, that have signed up to the Covenant uh, to show their support for veterans going forward. I'm really pleased that you're signed up to it. The hospital uh, are now veteran friendly and are now signing up uh, to this. And there's many businesses in Wrexham, particularly with our industrial estate, which is expanding and seem to be the largest in Europe. Uh, I get many inquiries from businesses that want to show their support for veterans by signing up for the Covenant. So there's some really good work going on um, across the UK, in Wales, and particularly in, veteran, uh, in, in Wrexham to support our veterans. If this is something you are interested in, if you are listening, I will put some details at the end of the show where you can find out how your business can also sign up to that scheme. Um, Sarah, we, we could talk all day about the military, but of course you're involved in many, many things throughout your um, area. Let's have a look at the topic of transport, because that's actually been um, a very busy sector as well, hasn't it, over recent months? Oh, it has. One of the uh, first things I did when I was elected um, was conduct a survey around parking because I was inundated with people coming to me saying they'd been unjustly fined for parking. You know, some ridiculous stories that if you drive into Eagles Meadow, go to the roundabout, come out again, you get a, you get a parking fine. So it was very uh, quick for me to realise that transport, parking, accessibility to Wrexham was really important to the residents. Um, Recently, Avanti and the service to London has been under scrutiny, has not been very good. Now, Avanti have promised me that there's going to be direct uh, routes to London from Wrexham, a.m. at 7 o'clock, p.m. coming back from London at 6 p.m., Monday through to Sunday. That is an increase in the service, and they're saying that's going to be from the 12th of December, but I have noted the 12th of December is probably a strike day. Uh, so I'll be monitoring that because we are a city. We need good uh, connectivity and um, we're reliant on Avanti to do that for trains um, but also I've received a lot of communications from uh, residents about their concerns about the 20 mile an hour zone that the Welsh Government are putting in place uh, across Wales in urban areas. Now Welsh Government is saying it's going to save a hundred million pounds uh, I'm yet to see how that's going to happen so I have uh, submitted an FOI to find out how it's going to save £100 million because it's going to cost £32 million uh, to put in place. So this is something that's rumbling on at the moment. And some of the comments I've had from constituencies, you know, why they're trying to slow Wales down, uh, particularly somewhere like Wrexham, which now it's a city, now there's a lot of investment coming into the area that people are saying we want to progress. Uh, we don't want to be throttled and held back. So this is something I'm looking at at the moment. Um, so I undertook a survey about whether residents really wanted this 20 mile an hour zone. Now we must remember everyone is in favour of having 20 mile an hour zones around care homes, hospitals, play parks, schools. That goes without saying. Uh, but 94% of the survey I undertook of Wexham residents did not want a blanket 20 mile an hour zone. So we'll be looking at the council uh, about how they're implementing that and what exclusions the council are going to make because the Welsh Government have said to the council, you know, you can decide if you want to uh, divert from this blanket 20 mile an hour zone. So I'm now working with the council to see uh, what plans they have. So the responsibility is now on the council. So that's something I'm looking at within 
Wrexham, uh, a few constituents got in touch with me about the signage at the bus station, uh, the live updates on buses, that there's fantastic signage put in there. It's quite a good uh, bus station, um, but the signage hasn't been working. So I'm really pleased to say that that signage is now working so people can get real time bus times. Um, and I've lobbied hard since being elected to make sure that we make Wrexham more accessible for people who don't want to drive as part of the active transport. And a lot of the bus routes are shaved back. And I'm really pleased now that uh, there's more bus routes coming on into the, the conurbation the areas like Boris or Acton. And I'm saying to people, this is great. This is what we've all wanted. But please use your local bus service because they've reinstated them. And if they're not used, they may be withdrawn again. So I've been working a lot around buses uh, for Repsom, and, and there's some good news on that one. I don't think we have enough taxis yet. That's my latest one. You know, if you come into Wrexham, a lot of people on the trains will get off at Chester if it's late and get a taxi from Chester into Wrexham because they know they won't get a taxi uh, at Wrexham Station. So this is something I'm working with, with the council on, and particularly for the nighttime economy and safety of, of women and girls. I think, you know, there's lots of factors at play here. There's obviously national things happening in Wales on a broader scale. There are regional things at play here, but there's also wrecks of emerging out of the COVID era, but also defining itself as a newly founded city. So there's so many factors at play, aren't there, where transport is such a core issue, isn't it? It, yeah, it's absolutely vital, um, not only within Wrexham itself, so we can all get around and come to town and use the economy and, and all the good new things and progressive things that are happening in Wrexham, uh, and for students as well, accessing university and College Cambria. But it's Wrexham going out, Wrexham going to the northwest, Wrexham going to London, Wrexham getting to the airports. Um, so it, it, it's very exciting at the moment, and I just need to make sure that Wrexham benefits from a great infrastructure and road infrastructure um, rather than be throttled back and held back by it. If we move on then, um, we're going to come to Christmas in a moment because, you know, we're getting towards the end of November. But let's just talk about um, the Chancellor's autumn statement. Now, everybody is, you know, let's be honest, very concerned with the financial outlook um, affecting us locally and nationally and, and even globally at the moment. Um, what are your reflections on the autumn statement? Yeah, the cost of living is something that's worrying everyone. Uh, some people in Wrexham uh, are particularly impacted by that. Uh, I was lobbied quite hard um, by pensioners around the triple lock, and I went to see the Prime Minister and the Chancellor about it before the autumn statement. And I'm really pleased that they uh, have done what they've done around pensions and triple lock. Um, I'm pleased they've listened, uh, and I'm pleased they've taken the action they have. Um, but there are big concerns about how people are funding heating. We've just now started to see heating needing to go on. It's getting colder. And it's only really now that we're going to start seeing the impact of energy bills. We must remember, thanks to, for, to Putin for this, that we are in the situation we are in and we've come out of COVID and it is a global problem. But my concern is not global, my concern is Wrexham. So the UK government have uh, given an extra £1.2 billion to the Welsh government uh, to help out with schemes in Wales. So there are quite a few schemes running at the moment from the Welsh government. There's equally a lot of schemes running from the UK government. Um, I think we're all seeing, let me just check my facts on this because there's quite a few, £400 per household support for energy bills. There's nine and a half thousand low income houses in Wrexham that are going to benefit from a further six hundred and fifty pounds. Uh, there's one hundred and fifty pounds extra for disabled people and three hundred pounds for pensioners as part of the winter fuel payment. That's in addition to the one hundred and fifty pounds council tax. So that's the UK government schemes. There are more. You will get those automatically. The Welsh uh, government schemes you have to apply for. So I'm really encouraging people who are struggling, and we're all going to struggle in some way or another, uh, to make sure that you're on the website, you make checking your eligibility. The UK government website is government.uk cost of living. And if you go on the Welsh government website, you can check your eligibility there. Please apply, please get these grants, because it's going to be a tough winter ahead.
And if you are in the Wrexham region and you are struggling, there is support available as well. Wrexham County Borough Council can signpost you to support. We are working with them to make that support available to you and get you all the information you need. Um, so, Sarah, let's talk about Christmas because um, it suddenly seems like it's not very far away, doesn't it? Well, I've just come back from the Falklands and there's Christmas trees everywhere. And I've only been there for a few days. I don't know what's happened since I've been away, but I'm behind the curve on Christmas completely. But on saying that, I have, um, in the beginning of November, for the second year running, worked with the Rotary and Mecca Bingo, because I'm a massive bingo fan, and I quite often go down to the bingo. Uh, uh, but I've been working with them on a scheme called Everyone Deserves a Christmas. And it's two projects that have come together. So the Rotary provide a fresh food hamper. So every family that gets a hamper, um, gets a proper Christmas meal and everything they need for Christmas meal, including a fresh poultry. Um, and then in conjunction with that, we've had the toy parcels uh, for children. Now, these schemes have come together. Last year was really successful. There was 50 hampers that went out and 50 um, toy parcels to go with them. So households were supported uh, and they were chosen by community groups, the Kaya partnership uh, and church groups. Now this year we want to go one better. It was so successful. So we've I've been working with them um, to set up a just giving page and we've written or I've written to all businesses uh, around Wrexham asking them to contribute uh, to raise funds and there's also a donation box being set up at Me Mecca Bingo. So if anyone wants to donate uh, toys for children, yeah. new toys please, in the form of sports equipment, science equipment, equipment, arts and crafts, uh, that box will be there at the foyer of Mecca Bingo until the 12th of December. Uh, I'm really pleased to say it's doing really well, it's taking off. I suspect we might get to about 150 hampers this year and thanks to all those businesses that have already donated uh, we'll be having a big gathering on the day that we pack everything up and it goes off in vans um, uh, to be delivered uh, households so that's really good it's, it, everyone deserves a christmas it's the just giving page and you'll find it under everyone deserves a christmas hamper Wrexham 22 really really quite incredible stuff isn't it and you know it, it's amazing to see how much the community supports the community isn't it especially you know in, in, in Wrexham it really is um an incredible thing isn't it there I think you're absolutely right coming out of Covid I was amazed at the community spirit in Wrexham I um I collect for well, poppies I sell poppies in Asda every year and I am absolutely amazed at the generosity of the Wrexham people uh you know, we, we raise thousands and thousands from Asda alone in Wrexham. And it's tough, you know, it's tough times for everyone. And yet, you know, the people of Wrexham seem to dig deep. When times get hard, the people of Wrexham step up. And I'm really proud think, of that. Uh, I think mentioning the poppy appeal, I, I think um, a, a special credit to Kevin Forbes, I'm sorry, Colin Forbes and his team, um, who have year on year done amazing things around the poppy collection. And we've worked closely with them this year to help promote and raise awareness for what they're doing and really incredible work absolutely incredible well it's the um, biggest fun, it's the biggest fundraiser for the rbl i think they raise about 40 million a year and of course that all goes back into supporting our service personnel their families and veterans so uh thank you to everyone that uh, that supports that now i am conscious how much time you've got because you are a very busy person but um let's just talk um christmas cards just before we finish Oh, yes, this is lovely. Every year I usually go to the schools, well, I do go to the schools and ask them to, for their children to draw me a Christmas card um, picture. And you get all sorts. It, it's real fun. Sometimes you don't quite know what you're getting in. And it, it's a really lovely time. But this year I thought I'd do something different. I'm uh, obviously a nurse and a social worker by background. I've been doing that for 27 years. Uh, and I uh, particularly are interested in older people. So I put it out to care homes this year for older people, uh, particularly with memory and cognitive problems, to reflect and reminisce on what they remember about Christmas. And it was absolutely lovely, very different this year. So this year, the winner uh, was Marion Davis from Ashgrove Care Home. 
uh, in Gresford, and she'll be going on the front of the Christmas card, which will be going over to politicians and uh, the prime minister and local businesses and people in Wrexham. And she drew a picture of her carol singing in Albert Street in Wrexham when she was a little girl. And of course, she remembers singing away in a manger. So her picture is on the front of the Christmas card and all the entries we received, I'll be uh, putting them in baubles and putting them on the Christmas tree, the parliamentary Christmas tree that I do every year for the Gresford uh, Parish Church Christmas Tree Festival. Uh, so all the entries will be there, but I'll be popping down to see Marion and the other people who submitted an entry and say thank you very much for having a cup of tea and some Absolutely lovely. Sarah, thank you ever so much for taking the time to talk to us today and bring us up to date with all of the work you've been doing for Wrexham. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon for another update. Thank you very much. Now, I did say I wasn't feeling Christmassy, so if you could possibly see your way to playing Fairy Tale of New York, it will set me on the right track. Favourite Christmas song. Thank you very much. We can do that for you. <laughs> Great stuff.